Is it going right? Oh, no, thanks. I don't smoke. Did you grow that moustache? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, no, I grew that moustache, and then after work, I put two other little bits on the sides. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jojo, my old friend. Hi, Adolf. What's wrong, little man? They call me a scared rabbit. This film is based on the novel Caging Skies by Christine Lewins. How did the story find its way to you? And more than that, what made you see it as cinematic? My mum was reading that book, and then she told me about it. And then I read it. And then I thought, oh, that might make a good movie. I've got so many good stories like this, guys. And <laughs> uh, uh, then I made it. <laughs> uh, it's a very hard film, as you can imagine, to pitch, so I didn't bother <laughs> pitching it to anyone. So I wrote the best script I could, and then I sort of sent that around and said, that's, that's the pitch. Having worked with Taika on Hunt for the Water People and a few t TV series before that, I kind of have an implicit trust with, with him, and so he sent me the, the script. And it read a lot like Hunt for the Water People to me. It had the tone of the heart and the emotion, but it was just of a much more important subject or a much bigger subject that meant a lot more to a lot of people. And so I was, yeah, I was immediately in once I read that script. You know what I am? Say it. A Jew. Gesundheit. For me, it was kind of just a normal audition. You get sent some sides and you read them and, and right off the bat I read the sides, not even reading the whole script. You could just tell it was going to be something special and the manual was being directed by Taika and Taika is a big thing in New Zealand for whatever reason. <laughs> 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 and it's for that reason that I don't go back there anymore. I that. that kind of attitude. So I was excited knowing he was going to be directing it. My audition process was not easy. Like this one time we were on a Skype call and every time he, every time he'd be like, so I'd do the lines, he'd be like, on that line, try to do it like, and uh, that'd be great. <laughs> like the, the Skype completely froze. Like every time he'd say oh, anything, no. it froze. <laughs> so I'd be like, <laughs> and I'd repeat the scene exactly the same. Oh, and wow. um, I was looking at him, I was, like, I was like, you probably think I'm the most spoiled brat you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. That does not listen. And then, uh, listen to your accent. <laughs> We didn't have a chemistry word, we just kind of started rehearsing and, and spending time with each other and I've got a little sister who's the same age as Roman and, and I was really missing her so he became like a little brother, to, he replaced my sister. Um, <laughs> Rob Esler, you're looking, fetching as usual. Oh. Okay, wow. It's because of you my son can't walk properly and has a messed up face. Once Scarlett signed on, she was one of the mm. first people to sign on to it, I think everyone else Sort of thought, oh well, if she's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Well, you just have to hit Scarlett Johansson, you get shivers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and then they tell you, yeah, you got to do a scene, loads of scenes. You're like, okay, yeah. I'll just swing that. Yeah. As soon as I came on set, she kind of knew that I was a bit intimidated and kind of scared, so she really encouraged me. And she's a mother now, and she was a child actress, so. Yeah, no, I always felt encouraged and kind of welcomed. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's going to get us all killed. It was like, hmm, who should play Hitler? How about that Polynesian Jew from New Zealand? <laughs> uh, with hair that actually looks like this. Uh, when I wrote it, I had no intention of playing that role. After I wrote it, like 2011, uh, I got distracted and, made, and went and made three other movies. And that's when Fox Searchlight had got in touch and said, look, we've always loved this thing, but we're only, we're only really interested if you play that Hitler role. They uh, said that? Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, they blackmailed me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the hardest thing was finding uh, Roman because oh. it's, you know, it's the most important role. And we, we auditioned kids for about four months and then he came in sort of right at the end when we were, trying, we hit, we were sort of forced to make decisions. And uh, Roman came and saved us. I tend to use uh, child actors who have never done anything before, as I feel like they they give better performances, more natural and pure performances. And then once the film's over, and I get all the accolades and uh, <laughs> take credit for everything, then I sort of just discard them and uh, <laughs> basically uh, never work again. <laughs> Oh, 
God. Comedy is an incredibly powerful tool for, and it always has been, for fighting bullies and dictators. You know, Hitler could not stand to be laughed at, and there's you know, many people you know, in, who have been in power in various countries <laughs> since then. Who do you mean? Who do not like to be laughed at. <laughs> that's the other thing that irks me about, you know, people say, oh, well, comedy is like, that's not real art, you know, you can't do anything with comedy. Like, you have to just have to make a super depressing film about this. Um, no, no, it's never. What comedy does to people is it, it disarms them and it mm -hmm. relaxes them and then they become more receptive and then they are expecting more laughs or they're just, they become more alert and focused. And then you can deliver something that means something deeper and potentially could actually change them.